Routine History Chapter 24 Jesus then left the temple. As he walked away, his disciples pointed out how very impressive the temple architecture was. Jesus said, You're not impressed by all this sheer size, are you? The truth of the matter is that there's not a stone in that building that is not going to end up in a pile of rubble. Later, as he was sitting on Mount Olives, his disciples approached and asked him, Tell us, when are these things going to happen? What will be the sign of your coming, that the time's up? Jesus said, Watch out for doomsday deceivers. Many leaders are going to show up with forged identities claiming, I am Christ, the Messiah. They will deceive a lot of people. When reports come in of wars and rumored wars, keep your head and don't panic. This is routine history. This is no sign of the end. Nation will fight nation and ruler fight ruler over and over. Famines and earthquakes will occur in various places. This is nothing compared to what is coming. Routine History Chapter 24 Jesus then left the temple. As he walked away, his disciples pointed out how very impressive the temple architecture was. Jesus said, You're not impressed by all this sheer size, are you? The truth of the matter is that there's not a stone in that building that is not going to end up in a pile of rubble. Later, as he was sitting on Mount Olives, his disciples approached and asked him, Tell us, when are these things going to happen? What will be the sign of your coming, that the time's up? Jesus said, Watch out for doomsday deceivers. Many leaders are going to show up with forged identities claiming, I am Christ, the Messiah. They will deceive a lot of people. When reports come in of wars and rumored wars, keep your head and don't panic. This is routine history. This is no sign of the end. Nation will fight nation and ruler fight ruler over and over. Famines and earthquakes will occur in various places. This is nothing compared to what is coming. I can. Jesus told this simple story, but they had no idea what he was talking about. So he tried again. I'll be explicit then. I am the gate for the sheep. All those others are up to no good. Sheep stealers, every one of them. But the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Anyone who goes through me will be cared for, will freely go in and out and find pasture. A thief is only there to steal and kill and destroy. I came so they can have real and eternal life, more and better life than they ever dreamed of. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd. He Jesus told this simple story, but they had no idea what he was talking about. So he tried again. I'll be explicit then. I am the gate for the sheep. All those others are up to no good. Sheep stealers, every one of them. But the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Anyone who goes through me will be cared for, will freely go in and out and find pasture. A thief is only there to steal and kill and destroy. I came so they can have real and eternal life, more and better life than they ever dreamed of. You know how it works. This story is about some of those people. The seed is the word of God. The seeds on the road are those who hear the word, but no sooner do they hear it than the devil snatches it from them, so they won't believe and be saved. The seeds in the gravel are those who hear. This story is about some of those people. The seed is the word of God. The seeds on the road are those who hear the word, but no sooner do they hear it than the devil snatches it from them, so they won't believe and be saved. Always with an eye to obey. Masters, it's the same with you. No abuse, please, and no threats. You and your servants are both under the same master in heaven. He makes no distinction between you and them. A fight to the finish. And that about wraps it up. God is strong and he wants you strong. So take everything the master has set out for you, well-made weapons of the best materials, and put them to use so you will be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way. This is no afternoon athletic contest that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. This is for keeps, a life-or-death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. Be prepared. And that about wraps it up. God is strong, and he wants you strong. So take everything the Master has set out for you, well-made weapons of the best materials, and put them to use so you will be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way. This is no afternoon athletic contest that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. This is for keeps a life-or-death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. 
beaten down so that we don't No test or temptation that comes your way is beyond the course of what others have had to face. All you need to remember is that God will never let you down. He'll never let you be pushed past your limit. He'll always be there to help you come through it. So, my very dear friends, when you see no test, these are all no test or temptation that comes your way is beyond the course of what others have had to face. All you need to remember is that God will never let you down. He'll never let you be pushed past your limit. He'll always be there to help you come through it. And He wants you to be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get, every weapon God has issued, so that when it's all over but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them. You'll need them throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. In the same way, prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. And don't forget to pray for me. Pray that I'll know what to say and have the courage to be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get, every weapon God has issued, so that when it's all over but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them. You'll need them throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. In the same way, prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. And God backs me up. But that's no life for you. You learned Christ. My assumption is that you have paid careful attention to Him, been well instructed in the truth precisely as we have it in Jesus. Since then, we do not have the excuse of ignorance. Everything, and I do mean everything, connected with that old way of life, has to go. It's rotten through and through. Get rid of it. And then take on an entirely new way of life. A God-fashioned life. A life renewed from the inside and working itself into your conduct as God accurately reproduces His character in you. What this adds up to, then, is this. But that's no life for you. You learned Christ. My assumption is that you have paid careful attention to Him, been well instructed in the truth precisely as we have it in Jesus. Since then, we do not have the excuse of ignorance. Everything, and I do mean everything, connected with that old way of life, has to go. It's rotten through and through. Get rid of it. And then take on an entirely new way of life. A God-fashioned life. A life renewed from the inside and working itself into your conduct as God accurately reproduces His character in you. What this adds up In Christ's body, we're all connected to each other after all. When you lie to others, you end up... But that's no life for you. You learned Christ. My assumption is that you have paid careful attention to Him, been well instructed in the truth precisely as we have it in Jesus. Since then, we do not have the excuse of ignorance. Everything, and I do mean everything, connected with that old way of life, has to go. It's rotten through and through. Get rid of it. And then take on an entirely new way of life, a God-fashioned life, a life renewed from the inside and working itself into your conduct as God accurately reproduces His character in you. Please, and no, a fight to the finish. And that about wraps it up. God is strong and He wants you strong. So take everything the Master has set out for you well-made weapons of the best materials, and put them to use so you will be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way. This is no afternoon athletic contest that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. This is for keeps, a life-or-death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. Be prepared. And that about wraps it up. God is strong, and he wants you strong. So take everything the Master has set out for you, well-made weapons of the best materials, and put them to use so you will be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way. This is no afternoon athletic contest that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. This is for keeps, 
a life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. Know that we'll all a new life. Our firm decision is to work from this focused center. One man died for everyone. That puts everyone in the same boat. He included everyone in his death so that everyone could also be included in his life, a resurrection life, a far better life than people ever lived on their own. Because of this decision, we don't evaluate people by what they have or how they look. We looked at the Messiah that way once and got it all wrong, as you know. We certainly don't look at him that way anymore. Now we look inside, and what we see is that anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start, is created new. The old life is gone. A new life burgeons. Look at it. All this comes from the God who settled the relationship between us and Him and then called us to settle our relationships with each other. God put the world square with Himself through the Messiah, giving the world a fresh start by offering forgiveness of sins. God has given us the task of telling everyone what He is doing. We're Christ's representatives. God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences and enter into God's work of making things right between them. We're speaking for Christ himself now. Become friends with God. He's already a friend with you. How, you say? In Christ. God put the wrong on him who never did anything wrong so we could be put right with God. Focused Center Because of this decision, we don't evaluate people by what they have or how they look. We looked at the Messiah that way once and got it all wrong, as you know. We certainly don't look at him that way anymore. Now we look inside, and what we see is that anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start, is created new. The old life is gone. A new life burgeons. Look at it. All this comes from the God who settled the relationship between us and him, and then called us to settle our relationships with each other. God put the world square with himself through the Messiah, giving the world a fresh start by offering forgiveness of sins. God has given us the task of telling everyone what He is doing. We're Christ's representatives. God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences and enter into God's work of making things right between them. We're speaking for Christ Himself now. Become friends with God. He's already a friend with you. How, you say? In Christ. God put the wrong on Him who never did anything wrong so we could be put right with God. Just go ahead with what you've been given. Watch out for people who try to dazzle you with big words and intellectual double talk. They want to drag you off into endless arguments that never amount to anything. They spread their ideas through the empty traditions of human beings and the empty superstitions of spirit beings. But that's not the way of Christ. Everything of God gets expressed in Him, so you can see and hear Him clearly. You don't need a telescope, a microscope, or a horoscope to realize the fullness of Christ and the emptiness of the universe without Him. When you come to Him, that fullness comes together for you, too. His power extends over everything. Entering into this fullness is not something you figure out or achieve. It's not... Watch out for people who try to dazzle you with big words and intellectual double talk. They want to drag you off into endless arguments that never amount to anything. They spread their ideas through the empty traditions of human beings and the empty superstitions of spirit beings. But that's not the way of Christ. Everything of God gets expressed in Him, so you can see and hear Him clearly. You don't need a telescope, a microscope, or a horoscope to realize the fullness of Christ and the emptiness of the universe without Him. When you come to Him, that fullness comes together for you, too. His power extends over everything. Entering into this fullness is not something you figure out or achieve. Many things in the world, I'm praying not only for them, but also for those who will believe in me. Because of them and their witness about me, the goal is for all of them to become one heart and mind, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you. So they might be one heart and mind with us. Then the world might believe that you, in fact, sent me. The same glory you gave me, I gave them. So they'll be as unified and together as we are, I and them and you and me. Then they'll be mature in this oneness and give the godless world evidence that you've sent me and loved them in the same way you've loved me. Father, I want those you gave me to be with me right where I am.
so they can see my glory, the splendor you gave me, having loved me long before there ever was a world. Righteous Father, the world has never known you, but I have known you, and these disciples know that you sent me on this mission. I have made your very being and praying not only for them, but also for those who will believe in me. Because of them and their witness about me, the goal is for all of them to become one heart and mind, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you. So they might be one heart and mind with us. Then the world might believe that you, in fact, sent me. The same glory you gave me, I gave them. So they'll be as unified and together as we are, I and them and you and me. Then they'll be mature in this oneness and give the godless world evidence that you've sent me and loved them in the same way you've loved me. Father, in creation. Meanwhile, the moment we get tired in the waiting, God's Spirit is right alongside helping us along. If we don't know how or what to pray, it doesn't matter. He does our praying in and for us, making prayer out of our wordless sighs, our aching groans. He knows us far better than we know ourselves, knows our pregnant condition, and keeps us present before God. That's why we can be so sure that every detail in our lives of love for God is worked into something good. God knew what he was doing from the very beginning. He decided... Meanwhile, the moment we get tired in the waiting, God's Spirit is right alongside helping us along. If we don't know how or what to pray, it doesn't matter. He does our praying in and for us, making prayer out of our wordless sighs, our aching groans. He knows us far better than we know ourselves, knows our pregnant condition, and keeps us present before God. That's why we can be so sure that every detail in our lives of love for God is worked into something good. God knew what he was doing. 